Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of the Idle Game Maker tutorial series. This episode we will cover resources and everything that they can be used for, how to declare them and so on. So let's begin. So resources are things you can gain and spend and they are declared in the resources section with a thing key. So basically like everything else, right? They are an extremely powerful feature and are the base of most idle or clicker games. Now resources can be used in various different ways which is why I like them so much and why I'm so excited about them. And they can be used as timers, on-offs, which is currencies, which is usually what you will use them for. But they can also be used for global variables, hidden counters, statistic counters and so so much more. So really don't sleep on resources, they can be a true lifesaver for your game. But, as good as resources are, they certainly have some limitations, at least in the current update of Idle Game Maker. So, resources cannot exceed an amount of 1E304, this is basically 1 with 304 zeros after it. So it's a pretty big number, but after this value, they will display as infinite and cap out, essentially granting you, well, infinite of them. And here we can see an image of this exact thing happening in a game. Now resources update only once per second with the on tick effect, that's another pretty annoying limitation. This basically means that you cannot have a building check for some condition every single frame, but only every second. So maybe with some games this is a pretty big issue, but 99% of the time this shouldn't really concern you at least that much. Now you cannot earn resources offline. There is actually a method someone has found, but it is very complicated and unpractical. And it would require a constant source file updating, basically updating your source file every single second. And uh, yeah, that's very unpractical. So earning resources offline is pretty much impossible in the current state of Idle Game Maker. Now with the limitations covered, let's move on to unique properties of resources. So, I have taken a snippet from the handbook, you can pause the video and read about them here. But you might notice a bit of a weird property here, right? These uh, properties in brackets. And properties in brackets are to be used in math as expressions as variables. And this actually applies to all properties in brackets. I have also included an example here. So here we have an on-click effect. And here we have the expression in which thinky ps is used in so using this expression in an on-click effect with a button would always grant you an amount of the resource equivalent right to the resources production per second divided by 100 each time you click the button so yeah this is pretty interesting because you can make production scale with the production of your resource so this is definitely very useful and honestly, that should be pretty much most of the things about resources covered. They are pretty simple, but pretty powerful anyways. And I actually have another optional challenge for you. So your tasks for this challenge is to add your own resource to the game, give it a name and a description and make your building produce that resource every single tick. That is if you haven't already done this in the last episode where I gave you that challenge. So give it a go. Hopefully it goes well, if not, I have a few hints prepared for you, so I'll pause the video, give it a go. Alright, so if you are still stuck, let me give you the first hint. So, declare a new resource in the resources section using a think key. And if you are still stuck, make sure the resource you're building is producing every tick matches the resources think key. And of course, use yield as well. Alright, hopefully you have given that a go, let me know how it went in the comments. And now I will actually add a resource to the game myself, teach you how to do it and also how to make a building produce that resource every tick. So let's get into it. Okay, so I am back in Pastebin. I also have my game open right here so we can quickly refresh and see what changes we are making. So we need to add a resource which means let's start by adding a resources section. Under that let's add a thing key name our new resource or well not really name give our new resource a thinky coin or coins for the plural the name should be a coin or coins again plural as well so it's more grammatically correct and give it a description i'll just make it simple 
get as many of these shiny collectibles as you possibly can. There we go. Now, the next step we need to actually produce coins with our building. So we have our metal detector here. Let's give it an on tick effect and just yield one coin. All right, so this is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Every single second we are going to get one coin. And this also scales with the amount of our metal detectors or our building. So for example, if we have 13 of these metal detectors, we should get 13 coins per second. So yeah, let's save our changes. Let's hit refresh and see what happens. So we have our coins here, metal detectors here, and we are gaining one every second. So yeah, this is pretty exciting. We already kind of have a game here and we are making excellent progress. Now the only thing left is to actually add a cost to this metal detector. I will quickly do that as well. So let's give it a cost of I guess 40 coins should be enough. There we go. Let's wipe our save, hit refresh. And there we go. Now our metal detectors actually cost 40 coins. However, we have run into a problem currently, however it's very easily fixable, and it is that we have no way of actually producing coins at the moment other than with our metal detectors. So, in the future we will of course add a button, which will most definitely be able to be clicked, and we are gonna gain points from it. So you will basically click the button 40 times, you get 40 coins, you buy a metal detector, start producing things automatically, and we already sort of have a game loop. Alright, that is the end of this episode. The next one will most likely be talking about how to implement icons into your game, finally, as well as implementing a button, and after that we should take a look at upgrades and how those work. So feel free to send me any video ideas or feedback in the comments, and if you really enjoy what I do here, feel free to check out my Patreon, for only two dollars a month i can shout you out at the end of my videos so thank you very much for watching and hopefully you found this tutorial useful and so i'll see you in the next one